Ja, gaan we ja. beginnen? Ja, yeah, let's start. Oké, okay. zal ik hem even introduceren? Welkom. Welkom to episode 3. Episode 3, Basecamp. How it all got started. Kijk, daar gaat Thijs. Plus jongen, niets te doen. Ja man. <laughs> uh, talk about our life in the base camp. How it all started. How it all started, our first uh, time moving, actually moving to our own village. So we are going to take you through the process of creating this base camp and uh, how we lived with a lot of um, limitations but uh, also a lot of highlights yeah going back to basics living with four kids in a yurt with grandma in a caravan that's exactly. how it all started Yeah. The 15th of July, we finally moved into uh, into our village, but not into the house, into base camp one. This yurt. Yeah, we took it from yeah. uh, from Amsterdam. We bought it in Amsterdam and took it uh, in a container over here. We built it up with the team of uh, Brazilian guys of Paulo. Make sure all the walls are standing at the same height as the door. Must. Nou, we zitten nu op vrijdag voor het weekend van onze verhuizingen, Ves. Maandag gaan we weg uit de Quinta. Ja. Zouden we eigenlijk naar Lissabon gaan direct? Dat gaan we we nee, we gaan eerst een paar dagen in de Jurt kamperen. Dat ga ik zakjes laten zien, die is daar achter ons. Hier is ons huis. Oké, de eerste. Maar die is nog niet klaar, zoals je kan zien. En 15 juli moeten hier permanent gaan wonen, dus daarom gaan we eerst in de Jurt. Um, so we were scared to move to the base camp because it was like 40 degrees and well a lot of the facilities were not in place yet. Maybe we have to call it basic camp. Basic camp. <laughs> wow. But we liked it actually. I thought it was, yeah, it was really fun. fun that we also experienced this phase because we thought we would skip it. We had the plan to move straight into our house. But uh Maar die is still niet klaar zoals je kan zien. <laughs> I really liked also this phase. It was really nice. It was cozy. We put all the wood chips around the camp because it was so dusty in the summer. Yeah. Uh, which was a really good move and it smelled very nice, the pine wood. And we had lots of dinners here and parties. Your birthday party. It's your birthday party. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 
we yeah. we took like 10 steps back but we can do it yeah. <laughs> i can still do it yeah i love my luxury but uh i can also go back to basic but it was a tough winter though also with in the, the winter rain time and stuff it will be too much for me in 20 years it didn't have so much rain over here no so we had like Local three months Satyros, of like yeah. a lot of rain and then you really notice if you're living in a camp life, it can get really frustrated because everything gets wet, everything gets dirty. You don't warm up properly. Um, so uh, respect for all the people that have been living off grid in Portugal for years in these uh, circumstances, because I am not made for it, that's for sure. It's so funny how uh, easy you get used to all the luxury that's you true. add. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> we, uh, we get used to luxury really quickly and we take it for granted uh, a lot yeah. so that also makes this time very interesting to you know see how you can live also without a lot of things that you are used to and still be perfectly happy as long as it doesn't take too, too long <laughs> Echt, mijn veerkracht wordt echt zo erg op de proef gesteld, jongen. Ik vind het zo moeilijk sowieso al om de hele tijd beperkt te zijn in wat ik kan doen, weet je. Heb ik al met een baby natuurlijk op een bepaalde manier de hele dag. En dan nu met zo'n poot en dan die hitte. Echt, ik, echt iedere dag verdrink ik echt een keer in zelfmedelijden. Ik weet dat het gewoon nergens op slaat, maar het is gewoon wel echt zo. Ik kan het helpen While living here, every day we had improvements on different points like connecting the shower having running water a uh, hot water having a toilet connecting our own the toilet, toilet <laughs> flush your shit yeah that's oh really that was a really big highlight so yeah we celebrate that one <laughs> now we're sitting here it's like early spring well it's not not really spring but for us dutchies it already feels like spring yeah it's uh, middle of february it's valentine's day yeah Sitting in our romantic yurt uh, that we spend already quite a lot of nights. And now we're still here. My mom is still here, actually. A big respect. Shout out to mom, who is working in the garden behind us. Yeah. Who, um, who has been living the entire winter in this yurt. Every night she uh, goes back into this cold yurt and she heats up the gas uh, burner and sits on her couch covered in blankets and... Uh, Big dogs that but keep her warm. The atmosphere but she's, is really, uh, <laughs> she's doing it. It's uh, incredible. Zeg het nou eerlijk in de camera. Jij bent een verwend nest. Want ik hou daarvan om in bed te slapen. Ja. Je houdt ervan om in bed te slapen. Ja. En Nova op de bank. En maar af en toe komt Nova dan ook gezellig bij. En dan heeft het vrouwtje die was koud. Wel altijd schoenen uitdoen als jullie in de jurt gaan, want dat hoort niet zo, hè. Ik schaam het diep. Ik kan me nu grommen. Wakker worden. Het is een domme aan, toch? Hé, kappen. Dan heb ik ook altijd het sprei erop. En dat... Uh, not finished yet. There's more. Let me show you this. The moment the kids went to school. Pop the champagne. The kids are out of the house. <laughs> <laughs> so the kids started school um, in the middle of September. Five days a week. Five days a week, they get picked up at 8.30 by the taxi. So this was a moment uh, we had more our hands free to do much more than before. Much more than before, and yeah. the kids really like the school, so I'm very, very relieved. They're learning Portuguese very quickly. Yeah. It's a tiny village school. They have a lot of attention, and uh, the kids come back home happy, yeah. and they're integrating really well in the Portuguese life and in the Portuguese language. Already and starting to speak with a perfect Portuguese and accent. Eu sou um quadrado, tem quatro piquinhos. Nee! Nee! Não, é isso que nem no português. Nee, dat is er niet. Eu sou um quadrado, porque no meio tudo mais. Tenho quatro lados todos iguais. Todos what? Iguais. Ai, não, 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 não,
we go. Was it in October Paula started? At the in the end at the end of September, I think, two weeks after the yeah. kids started school. Yeah, this was also a moment. Uh, yeah, uh, Paula is our, our our new hero and actually our first employee. It's a new family member, and, and we found Paula, uh, and she she's uh, so great. She's amazing, goud. She's yeah. golden. Helping us out with uh, taking care of Indy, but also cleaning and cooking, cooking and, and just bringing the kids to sports two times a week, and then we only have to pick them up. Uh, so she. Um, it was necessary too. It was really necessary. Yeah, I was yeah. really at my tax the end of the summer. Uh, yeah. Wow, I'm I'm so grateful that we have found her and that she blends in so well in the family and everybody yeah. feels comfortable and at home with her and she adores Indy. She she loves him so much. So it's really nice to see somebody take care of your baby with so much love. This is a moment uh, we have to show our hero shot of Paula. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. This for you, Anton. The summer, the, it was all around. Everything was concentrated around the base camp. Yeah. The terrace where the the yurt is situated is also a little bit of an experimentation garden for some first fruit trees and some uh, cacti and and succulents that I that I planted, experimented with, and mm -hmm. um, we made a little tropical garden around the outside bathroom, like in the Bali style that we all yeah. love and project bathroom. Bathroom garden, very nice. I planted the whole wall, remember, with like herbs and stuff in the middle of the summer and they all died <laughs> because it was way too hot to plant. So yeah, yeah made a lot of mistakes um, and we learned a lot too. Under the motto of Belofte Maakt Schuld, even a tour in our camp, what there all changed. Now, Indy, die sit lekker in zijn stoel. Hey, Indy. Ah, vieze vlieger. Haal die vlieger bij hem weg. Bobby. Bob is net terug van school. Dag drie, was het leuk? Ja. Ja? Ik ben de langste. De langste uit de klas? Uh -huh. Oké. Okay. Je hebt ook de smerigste chocolamond van de klas. Hey, het komt omdat ik chocola toch eet. Ja. Verder, wat is er hier veranderd? Um, nou, Barbara die doet nog steeds... Uh, de was? Nee, ik ga nee, een de... maken voor de kinderen. Ja, oké. Okay, kinderen okay. gaan in de tube. Ja. Nou, het, uh, de cactustuin is behoorlijk uitgebreid. Het heeft na het allemaal steentjes neergelegd en cactusjes geplant. En de plantjes worden iedere dag hier gewaterd. Verder heeft de Joert uh, naast het dek ook een trapdek gekregen waar je lekker op kan chillen. Heeft Jos gemaakt, super mooi. Samen bedacht, hij heeft het uitgevoerd toen we in Amsterdam waren. En we hebben hier ook nog uh, boven op de drainageslang hebben we een extra tuintje gemaakt met een palm en de advoca avocado. Die hebben we verplaatst van hier daar naartoe. En daar komen ook allemaal bloemetjes op. En dan hebben we een, 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 een uh, Szechuan peperplant, andere pepertjes, bloemetjes, compost, al dat soort dingen. Nou, dit was het even voor nu uh, bij het uh, Jordkamp. The olive picking a lot of feste, and... which was really nice. And, yeah. and that was in uh, November, but it was uh, a very, very nice weekend. We had great weather. Yeah. And we had Maria de Luz, the old uh, villager. Our first harvest of uh, the yeah. olives and we made oil out of it. Yeah, and Maria really was nice. the commandante. She, <laughs> she was giving orders and she knew how 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 it is done so really good teacher by the way she was first first one uh, on yeah. the <laughs> first one on the ground in the morning and the last one to go <laughs> climbing up in all the trees 80 year old woman and uh, cutting all the branches uh, by hand bossing everybody around how <laughs> to work and how to pick yeah it was very very funny but it was really nice to do like this first harvest and invite some friends and yeah. uh it really feel felt like a a party. Now I understand like harvesting parties, you know, that yeah. you can really celebrate the fruits that have grown on your land. And then Three, 350 kilos of uh, olives and we had like 
45, Almost 40, 45 uh, yeah, liters of uh, oil. Yeah. Amore, wat gaan we doen vandaag? We gaan lekker olijven plukken. What are we gonna do? Papa gaat met olijfje er vandoor. Sukkel. We're gonna pick olives for the first time today. We have our first um, guest and helping hand there in the back, Maria. She knows everything and she's gonna help us. So look at that, Maria is already preparing the first nets. She can't wait to get started. I told her that I was gonna start around 11. She's 11, that's way too late. You need to start way earlier. But you know, it's also my Saturday. We work all week, so I thought 11 is fine. De 150 kilo staat hier, denk je? Ja, 40, 50, 40 kilo. Ja, dat had ik een beetje verwacht, inderdaad. Uh, vandaag, toen ik hoorde dat er ongeveer 10 zakken waren gevuld. Ja. Nice. Daar kunnen we wel een jaar op teren, denk ik. 40 liter olijfolie. But it was a nice first experiment and uh, we still have a bunch of them uh, soaking in water um, because we're trying to uh, make our, uh, our first eating olives. So mm. they have to soak in water for a couple of months and then you put salt in it and uh, leave them for a while longer. And <laughs> very, very curious to see how our olives will taste. Yeah. Quality check. Even, even kijken wat uh, Michael ervan vindt. Mm. Ja, So I'm happy that we've experienced this place, um, the Yurt Camp. That's what what I like about this project too. Is that every project you start, you uh, you start also exploring and living in the in the in the area. What I would advise people is like to live really one year round uh, on your on your territory to to get to know your your property really well in every season uh, because before mapping out everything before making really important decisions yeah. it's important to to live a uh, year round on your property yeah to understand yeah and how also it works and how it works with the seasons as well yeah so we're not quite there yet. We still have a lot to do, a lot of building to do and a lot of learning to do. And this was actually a temporary house for us. And in the future, we're going to rent it out. Uh, so this is going to always stay a really special spot of the, of the area for us. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Where it all started. It's beautiful also. This spot of uh, it's it's in the heart of the whole uh, yeah it's true this is in the in the heart of the village yeah it feels so zen yeah and it's so really magical it's really beautiful i love right? waking up and then lying in yeah. the bed and just looking through uh through the glass part watching through the window in the top 
and seeing the moon and help you yeah thank you for watching uh, the third episode of freedomville tv this was the third episode of freedomville tv uh, about our base camp uh, we hope to see you next time uh, if you like the video make sure to um, do you like it to like it <laughs> <laughs> don't forget to like us and to share it with your friends and family and follow us subscribe over here to see more of our adventure here in portugal it's only the beginning yeah. <laughs> we zijn er. Goed zo. Eet smakelijk. Ach, is dat zo'n mooie les van Anton geweest. De beste lessen ever.